evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Hardcore Challenge Live. I am the Commish, Ben Klein, and uh, this is our Week 13 Update Edition. Obviously, we are uh, towards the second, uh, late into the second half of our week. We've already had Thursday Night Football. We've already had the full slate of early games on Sunday, the full slate of late games on Sunday. And we are halfway through Sunday Night Football, and that only leaves half of Sunday Night Football and Monday Night Football left for our week. So, you know, the majority of the week is over, so a lot of games are already decided. And um, one of those games that is decided is our Game of the Week. So, let's take a look at the Game of the Week. Johnsonville Brats really needed to win to uh, keep pace at 7-5. and five. They're going to fall back to 7-6, and six, but they're still going to stay in the playoff hunt and have the possibility of grabbing a wild card if a lot of uh, a lot of crazy things happen. A lot of crazy things would have to happen. But they would, they would still mathematically be alive. So, they made it very difficult on themselves, though. As uh, I'm thinking Arby's currently has 179 points. Keep in mind, they only needed, like, Almost 172 averaged over the next this game and next week to break the regular season hardcore challenge scoring record, which is uh, quite a feat. And uh, they're at 179 right now, and they still got uh, T. Y. Hilton to play tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hard hard to tell what they're going to end up with, but they're going to definitely cover what they need to score this week, plus some. So that's looking pretty impressive. Johnsonville Brats, man, that's a, that is a that is a tough loss to uh, score 157 points and um, lose. That's rough because uh, that's that's obviously a, it's obviously a good score. So the other game besides the game of the week, which is a game I was considering for game of the week to begin with, was uh, the Beaver Street Roar against the Renegade Misfits. Um, obviously, the, one of the tightest races right now is the Dirty South race. On the phone, we have uh, owner of the Beaver Street Roar, Mr. Matt Heron. How are we doing tonight, Matt? I'm doing pretty good, Ben. How are you? You kind of sound a little rough. I sound a little rough? Uh, yeah, you sound a little bit better now. All right, all right. Um, so... Looks like uh, you're most likely going to pull out a W this week. Yeah, it looks like I got it in the bag. looks like I had it from the get-go and just kept it the whole time. Yep, um, definitely going to win this game. Good job, Renegade Misfits. It's kind of uh, crappy that you didn't have your whole team, but uh, still a win is a win, and I'll take it this late in the year. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fancy football. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Unfortunate. So you're, it's looking like you're going to win. You're gonna to move to ten and three, so um, ten and three. You're gonna hold. You're holding down the number two seed, which means that you will have a first round bye, most likely. At because um, I don't nobody else. Although you have they see me rolling still hanging right behind you in a very tight game as well. What do they got going on here? Let's see. Because uh, although, yeah. although Rawls left the game with a concussion, so he's done. He's done scoring points for uh, Rawlin. Mm. Yeah, he still has Russell Wilson going. And, uh, yeah. well, the Panthers defense isn't going to do Mikey any favors. And maybe Cliff Abel, he'll, he might make a splash play here or there. Yeah, that one's going to be close. Yeah. But I think they see, they see me Rawlin's probably going to win. So... That looking forward to next week. Have you looked at your next week's opponent yet? Um, how about I do that right now? Because uh, you ended up with a very favorable matchup in the last game of oh, the yeah. season. <laughs> the Royd Rangers. Okay, yeah. Um, looks like I'll have uh, an eleven, eleven and three record by the end of next week. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I would, I would say so. That, that's a, probably a fair, fair projection. So. With that being said, and I'm, uh, Arby's has a, uh, who do they play in the final week? They have a, uh, they have a fairly tough matchup as well, I believe. Oh, actually, it's Cheesehead. Cheesehead plays, I'm thinking, Arby's in the final week of the season. So, 
That could be interesting. That could be an interesting one. We'll but. see. I mean, best thing that could happen is what? They lose and I get the number one seed, but still, he, uh, I think he scored so many points this season that no matter what seed I'm thinking RB ends up, man, it's probably going to be number one. Yeah, they're still the probably the front runner. Probably, probably, but technically, I mean, they're only a half game ahead of you. So if they lose next week, it's possible. Cheesehead has put up some. Uh, they were the leading score last week, and they've put up. Uh, they put up some decent points this week. So I think they still got guys to score yet. Nah, he's pretty well done. He's got a linebacker left. So he only put up 123. He was the leading score last week, but this week, not so much. Not so much. I wish I could just bench my guys and keep them healthy for the playoffs, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, uh, I would say it looks like you're probably going to get a first round bye. So, uh, congratulations. That's good Thank stuff. Thank you very right. much. That's good stuff right it's there. The best, it's the best finish I've had in the hardcore challenge so far in the regular season. So, um, I know I think I won the division last year, but I wasn't a two seed. I was probably, I think, a three or, or maybe even a four seed, but still. Um, yeah, being a two seed in the hardcore challenge, man, it feels like an accomplishment. This is a great league and a great challenge, and uh, I'm glad that I'm, uh, yeah. I've got it going on. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, run through the rest of these games. Thanks for joining me, Matt. Um, I'm sure we'll, we're going to be talking to you soon because we're going to have a little uh, playoff special before the playoffs start. And uh, you're going to obviously be one of our playoff owners this season. So. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I'll see you in the, po in the postseason. All right. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> all righty. So. Those were two of our highlight games. But one of our other highlight games was Stinky Pinky against Cheesehead. It looks like Cheesehead is going to... Uh, Corey's actually going to take the win. Big win. Keep his playoff hopes alive. Although they are very, very slim. As it looks like Bison Broncos is going to win their game. Which means um, that puts Cheesehead out of the running. Corey is not going to have a chance to add to the division crown. Looks like Kent is going to repeat, going to um, take the division title for the second year in a row, his uh, fifth time, fourth time, excuse me, overall, and um, he's going to be heading into the playoffs to defend the uh, Hardcore Cup again. Wasn't looking that way at the beginning of the season, which you know has to be noted. The reason it wasn't looking that way at the beginning of the season is we had the Pale Horseman who jumped out to a 5-0 and lead, number one on the power rankings. The whole rest of the division was 2-3 and three, at a full three-game lead at five weeks in, which is unprecedented. And they have completely nosedived, and they are only going to, they're projected to finish with maybe 110 points, as Oski Assassins has already put up 144. So they are done. They're dropping to 6-7. and seven. After they started the season at 5-0. and And that has opened the gate for Bison Broncos to come from behind and uh, steal the division crown. So Bison Broncos is going to be pulling away. They've still got guys to play. And uh, the 5-3 Bandits is done. They've got a kicker playing and a half. And currently they're still down. So that, that game is pretty well going to be over. So, uh, Skull Crushers is losing to Vandal Industries. That's going to end Skull Crushers' chances. Their bubble has been popped. They're no longer in playoff contention. They are out. Uh, Stinky Pinky by losing to Cheesehead. And uh, Tama Tears, who looks like they're going to beat Roid Ragers, if that holds true. And Tama Tears continues to beat Roid Ragers, although it's still a little close. You've got uh, Roid Ragers as a kicker to go, but with... Um, Matt Forte being the guy that uh, Tama Terrace has to go, considering they've already got the lead. I, I think it's a no-brainer that Tama Terrace is going to win. Which means Tama Terrace will now flip-flop Stinky Pinky and take the Wild West lead by half a game coming into the final week of the season. And they have a tough matchup in the next week as um, Tama Terrace plays Renegade Misfits. As Renegade Misfits is going to be fighting for their playoff life. It is an absolute must win. They have went on a skid now. They're going to have... Um, 
This will be their second loss in a row. Right down the playoff stretch. They're beat up. They've had injuries. It's not looking good. It's not looking good for um, Renegade Misfits. So next week's going to be a must win. It's a must win for Tame Terrace too. They can't afford to slip. So um, it's going to be an interesting one down the stretch. Definitely is. They see me rolling. That one with Des caught it, that's very close, but it looks like they see me Rollins is going to uh, pull the win out, even though uh, Rawls has left the game with concussion. He uh, put up a ton of points before he left the game. So uh, he did his damage, and uh, he's going to be in concussion protocol the rest of the game. I'm sure he's not coming back. So um, other than that, that pretty much covers it. Our game of the week's decided. I'm thinking RBs remains the number one seed going into the playoffs. They've, like I said, they've already clinched their division crown. In the Elite East, Bison Broncos is clinching their division crown with their win this week as they are pretty much got theirs locked up as well. Uh, Stinky Pinky has relinquished the division tie, or lead excuse me, in the Wild West as Tame and Tears, with their win, jumps Stinky Pinky and takes a half-game lead. Beaver Street Roar is looking like they are going to keep their lead in the Dirty South but they see me Rollins, looks like they are going to move up as well and stay right behind them and stay tied record-wise, tied for first at uh, 10 and 4 as well because it looks like they are probably going to pull out the win as well. Now Renegade Misfits is going to lose again, looks like, dropping to 8 and 5 like we'd said, and that makes the uh, wild card race very, very sketchy. But we'll go through that on Tuesday when um, I'll give you the clear playoff picture after everything is actually a final. So until then, go check out the second half. See if the Panthers can come back. It's a Super Bowl team. You know, the Raiders, I think, I think we crushed their spirits last week. What about the Raiders? 10-2. and two. Derek Carr. Four unanswered touchdowns for the Raiders. 10-2. and two. That's your number one team in the AFC, baby. Number one in the AFC West, number one in the AFC Conference, Oakland Raiders. Raider Nation, you ready for the challenge? Good luck. Game on.